my name's Erin. I'm a digital public relations coordinator at Mall of America. I've been here for about a year and a half full time. I see quite a few familiar faces in the audience because I've sat in on a few meetings with you guys to discuss your social strategy. So I'm here today to kind of talk about how nonprofits can use social media to build awareness of their brand and their organization, to drive traffic to their events, and to raise money. Okay, so by raise of hand, how many of you guys have felt like this when it comes to social media? I was going to say, if no one raises your hand, I don't believe you, <laughs> because this is my job and I feel like this all the time. Um, there are tons of social media channels out there, or platforms, as I'm going to refer to them as, so it's okay to be intimidated and overwhelmed a little bit at first, because we all feel that way. So hopefully after you leave here, you have a good understanding of a couple of the basic platforms you can use, and choosing what platform works for you. So let's get started. Picking the right platform. Um, you don't need to be on every social media channel. There are so many channels out there. Sorry, can you not hear me? I'll just hold it. Okay. There are so many channels out there, um, and it's kind of like that bright, shiny object. I know if you guys have heard that metaphor before. It's new, it's exciting, everybody's talking about it. Um, but take a minute to kind of sit back and see if it really fits your organization or if you have the resources to manage that channel. Um, so a couple tips when picking the right platform or social media channel for you, establish goals. So what are your goals for being on social media? Building awareness of your organization obviously is a huge one. Communicating with fans, um, and not only just communicating with fans, but building a community, Big, um, building an experience online where you can engage with those fans, um, answer questions, ask for their feedback driving attendance to your event, and raising money. So step two, create a basic strategy. And that's what I do at Mall of America. I evaluate all of our social media channels, and I decide, you know, what content are we going to post this week? What big events are coming up? Let's organize this so it makes sense. Um, and how often do you plan to post and respond? Really take a look at your resources and how many people you have that are going to be managing your social media channels, because that's going to kind of that's going to depend on what uh, channels you're using. So let's say you're using Facebook, for instance. You kind of have a little more lenience with the time that you need to respond to guests um, and fans. We refer to them a lot of guests as guests because that's kind of who our fan base is. Um, whereas Twitter, people are expecting a real-time response. So you're going to need to be on that 24-7 and um, monitoring that. So Facebook, this is the first platform I'm going to talk about. Um, and the reason why it's Facebook is because it's easy. It's easy to share content um, and engage with your community. So what is good content? Uh, good content, in my eyes, is anything that results in engagement. So from um, a perspective of doing it from all of America is posting material and content on our pages that's going to result in likes or shares or um, comments. So any sort of engagement. And that could be sharing stories, articles, um, resources relevant to your audience. And Google Alerts is a great way to um, get content. So I have Google Alerts set up on my computer for Mall of America and also for National Americans, um, uh, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, which is one of the nonprofits that I'm a part of. Um, also posting photos and asking questions, like I said, and I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Um, and understanding that it's OK to experiment with content. Um, we do a lot of trial and error here. And some things don't work, and some things nobody likes or talks about. Um, but that's okay because we can measure that and I'll show you that in a minute as well. Um, and like I said, engagement is a way to not only talk to your community because obviously you want to push your content out there and push your events, but you also want to take a minute to see what people are saying on your page and engage with them, listen to them. You want to create an experience. And this is just a little photo that I like because sometimes I feel like this when I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to post or creating content. It's kind of like a blank slate. So go use your resources, use people um, in your community and in your organization and ask for their opinion sometimes. Okay, so here's an example of posting a photo for a nonprofit that's going to be successful. Um, and what they did is uh, they posted kind of how to cope with well, the tragedy that just happened at the Boston Marathon. Another way to take this kind of example, and it looks like it's cut off on the bottom a little bit, but um, is to post maybe three ways that um, your guests can fundraise. So let's say host a car wash, a bake sale, a 5K, something like that. Give them ideas, share ideas. 
and also just asking questions. So this is more of the engagement piece. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be all about your brand all the time, especially with the weather today. Ask what your fans are doing. Let them know. Build that trust. Let them know that you are interested in what they have to say. And there's also ways to measure your content and not what's working and what's not. So what we use is Bitly at Mall of America, and it's a free tool. Um, you can sign up with email, Facebook, or Twitter. We're connected to our Twitter account. And I can kind of show you what that looks like here. When you log in, it has the Welcome Mall of America. And when, you have, when you're posting anything, you have a hyperlink. And that's what you want people to click on. It's going to bring them to your website or your fundraising page. You can shorten that here by pasting the link. And then when you post it, it's going to come up like this, where the bit.ly is at the top above the photo. And then you can use that and track that. Oops, I'm sorry. And it'll show you what posts are doing well. So we posted something for the Radisson Blue opening. We had 1,343 clicks on that. So we know that that was good content, and that's what people like. So that's another that trial and error piece. Also being consistent with your image, and I'll show you a couple examples of that in a minute. Um, quality images are key. So, and that's not only your, um, your images or your avatars, that's also the photos you're posting. Because the last thing you want to do is post a crappy photo that no one's going to want to share. You can also target your audience with Facebook ads. I think social media is becoming a new kind of face for advertising. I mean, it is a face for advertising. Instead of posting on the back page of a newspaper, spend anywhere from 5 to $25 and post it on Facebook. Um, yeah, it's kind of like buying friends or buying likes, but you're sharing your content with them and hopefully building trust and building a friendship so they'll continue to follow you. Come to your events, donate money, and that's great for your organization. You can also connect with Facebook applications or apps, as we refer to them as, um, with other channels. So we have share Facebook albums, Post your events in your events tab so that people have the opportunity. Make it easy for them. They can just go to your page, click it, and see what's going on. Um, you can also link your Instagram account, Pinterest, YouTube, etc. So if you were to go on Mall of America's page and click Instagram, all of our Instagram pictures will populate. So it's just a great way to cross over those social media channels. And this is the, in one example from the Red Cross. This is their cover photo image, so on their Facebook page, it's just about half of this. But when you click on it, it really tells the story of American Red Cross, and it creates that brand experience. I mean, you look at that, and it's inspiring. And then it stays consistent across all channels. So this is their logo, or what most people would refer to as an avatar on social media. And this is how it stays consistent on Twitter, on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. So moving forward to Twitter, why should you as a nonprofit organization use Twitter? I think Twitter is one of the most valuable resources for you. Again, it's just like free marketing. So it's building awareness of your mission and events. It's an easy way to share that content. Pre-promote your events. Tweet during your events. Um, get people to tweet on your behalf. Strategic marketing. So making connections with social influencers, your supporters, as Mandy said, stakeholders, board members, staff, volunteers, sharing that information and educating all of those people to share your, informa your information or share it on your channels on their behalf. So leveraging your connections, which I will touch on in a minute because you have so many opportunities out there as a nonprofit to connect with um, companies that are willing to donate to you. So use their um, social media channels as well so you guys both can mutually benefit each other. Um, and check out what your competition is doing. See what other nonprofits are doing, what they're doing well or maybe not so well, um, and compare to that. So also connecting with your community. People who are coming to your events, especially if they're using social media, are already conditioned to be looking for your organization on Facebook, looking up what hashtags you're using. And if you don't know what hashtags are, I can explain that in a minute as well. Um, and I actually have a nonprofit who's here today who's done a really good job of that, and I worked with them on one of their events, and I will give you an example. Um, it's another way to discover and share ideas and receive feedback. And again, like I said, Twitter users expect a faster response time. So if this is one of the channels that you are choosing to use, make sure you have the resources to be consistently responding and monitoring that. Also, if it's coming up to an event and you're days away or you're hours away, minutes away, people are going to be asking more questions, so be prepared to respond to those. Okay, so this is um, what Demand the Change for Children did. It's a coalition against um, sexual abuse for children. 
Um, and what we did is we set a hashtag ahead of time, and it was the hashtag that's down in the left-hand corner, Change for Kids. And this is their at demand the change, so this is their Twitter handle or how people communicate with them. Um, they were really great as making, making this consistent across all channels and educating their audience and people attending their events and participants of their events beforehand so they knew to use that at the event. So this was actually on all of their slides in the rotunda. So it was great exposure for them. People who were at the event who were on Twitter went in there and just saw, oh, change for kids. So they hashtag that in their, any of their tweets. So anyone who's searching demand the change or change for kids, this will populate. This is another example at the event. This is Heather Lynn Music, who was one of their performers, who took the hashtag, so she took a picture on Instagram, sent it to Twitter, and used the hashtag. So again, leveraging her popularity, all of her followers saw this. And then consistently using it across their channels. So they used the change for kids, they tagged at Mall of America, and they also used our hashtag, which we use at nonprofit events, which is MOA Cares. Um, also leveraging your connections. So what Sarah Dorman does a really great job of is working with nonprofits to raise more money for them. So this is a, kind of a test campaign that we ran for about a week and a half before the event. We tweeted twice a day, join us and help prevent child sexual abuse with Demand the Change. For every retweet, we'll donate a dollar. So there's the bit.ly link there. So we could track how many people actually clicked on it. That went directly to their website. We used the hashtag MOA cares and change for kids to track all the retweets. So within an hour and a half, we had 70 retweets. So it ended up raising hundreds of dollars for the organization. And then finally, Instagram. Instagram is one of my favorite platforms. It's just basically using, it's a mobile app, and it's using um, photo-based content to engage with your followers, showing them behind the scenes stuff, engaging with them at events, taking pictures, and then you can edit those pictures. And I'll show you some examples. So this is one of the um, photos we took at a Demand the Change for Children event. We have some JDRF photos in here. And these are all from the Mall of America account. So these are just photos that we took and shared. We have the GiveMN there on the right-hand side. And there's also ways to track what, um, what content that your followers are liking on here. And if there's anything that I'm saying that you, that's, you, it's not clear, feel free to email me afterwards because I can explain some of this stuff to you. So the bottom photos that or the photos that line the bottom, that's off of a website called Statagram, and that compares your photos side by side, and it also measures if people like them, if they don't, kind of the sentiment of all the photos. And then here are just some more unique ways to use Instagram to engage with fans. So when I'm trying to think of what I'm gonna post or what's gonna be interesting to people, on the upper left-hand corner is just a photo of our press clipping wall, which happens to be right outside my cube. Um, it was when we had the ice castle out in the north lot. So I just took a picture of that, Instagrammed it, and people loved it. They love to see that kind of behind the scenes content. Same with the um, lookbook. We were uh, taking photos for our prom lookbook, so we did a behind the scenes photo there. Um, one important thing to note when on any social media channel is pay attention to what's trending around you, whether that's locally, nationally, at any level. When Hurricane Sandy hit, what we did is, and a lot of brands are doing this nowadays, they're going silent. So just paying respect to whatever tragedy has taken place and not trying to push your content out there during that time because it's really not appropriate. So we waited a while and then posted this picture of a heart umbrella and said, much love to our friends on the East Coast, stay safe out there. Um, and then the bottom is just um, kind of how we promoted Minneapolis uh, St. Paul Fashion Week ahead of time and then sort of live tweeted the event with using Instagram. And there's also apps out there that can make collages, so it doesn't necessarily have to be one picture. And then QR codes. How many of you out there are still using QR codes? Okay, so I'm kind of indifferent about QR codes. They can be either really cool or they can flop. So if you're gonna use a QR code, make sure it serves a purpose, be creative with it, and test it. So here are a couple examples of QR codes that aren't gonna work. Um, this one, for example, you're going to get run over by a train if you try and take a picture of this QR code. This one is, I don't know how many feet in the air, but you're never going to be able to snap that by the time it flies by. And this one, how many of you want to try and open an app, take a photo on the side of a bus while you're driving and moving? Probably not anybody. So here are a couple good examples. This one is from the Cleveland Museum of Art it is. This was on all of their brochures and maps of the museum. 
So when you held your phone over it and you snapped this QR code, a QR code, by the way, is a quick response code for those of you who don't know, and it's a mobile app that you just basically take a picture of these and it brings you to a website. Um, and anytime anyone snapped that QR code, it took them to an audio version of the map. So they could get audio of what they were seeing while they were walking around. This is Starbucks, and I have this one on my phone. As soon as you hit that touch to pay, a code populates and you can pay directly from your phone. And I believe this is JCPenney, but this is um, what they did for their holiday campaign. You would buy a gift, and anytime you bought a gift for somebody else, it would come with a QR code, and you could record a message saying who the gift was from and personalize it. Oops. And then my most important point, um, a great way to utilize this now um, is use a QR code to link to your GiveMN mobile donation URL. So have that QR code, let people snap it, it takes them to a donation page and let them donate. So my key takeaways here are choose platforms that work for you. Don't try and do everything um, and do it kind of half, you know? Do, be on, it's okay to be on one platform, it's okay to be on just two. Take those and do them really well. Create and share visually compelling content. The one thing that does the best are photos. People want to see photos, people want to share photos, and they want to engage with you and comment on them. Also remember, social media doesn't sleep, so prepare yourself to be mobile and flexible, especially at those times leading up to your event and right after your event when people, it's fresh on their minds and they want to talk about it. Um, be smart, be personal, and be likable. My team, I believe, does a really great job of being personal via social media. We're always talking to people as we are, using our voice, our personality, and emulating them all through that. So it's fun and it's friendly. This is an opportunity for you to share your passion for your cause, so embrace that. Don't um, bore your fans and use a spell check. I can't tell you how many times I read a post before I post it, and if I spell something wrong, somebody will call you on it. So just spell check.